Well, good morning, Biology 30s. We we're going to talk today a little bit about mitosis, one of the important parts of the cell cycle. So this uh, beautiful diagrams in this handout is from a lady who taught AP Biology, um, Kim Foglia, her name was. And I like this quote that she's got. Bio biology is the only subject in which multiplication is the same thing as division. So the cells multiply, well, they're also dividing. So this material is in your textbook. It's actually chapter 16, cell cycle, cell growth, cell division. And when we talk about cell division, it is the important process that is happening for reproduction. If you are a unicellular, a single celled organism, this is the way that you reproduce. You go from one to two. It's also important for cell growth. That's how we went when you were a one celled zygote, you grew into an embryo. And this is also how your body cells will repair, renew and replace themselves after they've been damaged. So remember when we're talking the embryo, we started out as a one-celled organism, right? This is the zygote, the fertilized egg, the zygote, the sperm, and the egg came together to make this one cell, you, right, from your mom and dad, 23 chromosomes of each, and then you underwent cleavage as you started moving down the fallopian tube of your mom's body. You became a two-celled embryo, a four-celled embryo, an eight-celled, 16-celled blastocyst, etc. And so this is the cell division that we're talking about, the mitosis, that is allowing one cell to grow into many, and that's how you grew as an embryo to what you are today. So what needs to be passed to the daughter cells, that's the offspring cells, you have to make sure that the right amount of DNA is passed on to the offspring. And so we undergo the cell cycle and the majority of the cell cycle we know is interphase. And of course that starts with G1, GAP1, S phase, that's where the DNA replication occurs, the copying of the genetic material and then G2, preparation for mitosis, and then mitosis and cytokinesis. That's the actual division of this one cell into two, two into four, etc. So we've already talked a bit about the cell cycle, and we've also talked a bit about copying DNA. Another way of saying that is the replication of DNA, and this has to be done before the cell divides in order to ensure that each of the daughter offspring gets an identical copy of the DNA, so they have the right chromosome content. So when we talk about these words, there's a, a fair amount of vocabulary here, right? When we talk about a chromosome as opposed to a chromatid, the chromatid is the unduplicated. And so it's like a single individual. And then during S phase, we make a copy, we replicate the DNA. And now we have two sister chromatids, also known as one chromosome. So it's now duplicated. Right, And so we go from unduplicated, the single, to duplicated. Okay, so understanding those different terms. In the center, kind of almost like he's wearing a little belt here, is the central mirror. And so here is one chromatid, and two of them together makes a chromosome. And remember, this is condensed genetic material, what we see during the mitotic phases. So when we look at the cell's lifespan, the life cycle, 90% of the time is interphase and 10% is the mitotic phase, mitosis and cytokinesis. When we're looking at the DNA and in interphase, it's this long stringy genetic material. It's not condensed. It's chromatin, not chromosome. It hasn't condensed yet into those short and fat little chromosomes. Okay. Uh, interphase, you guys remember that it is not a resting phase. There's lots going on. There's metabolism, cell respiration, protein synthesis, and that's occurring both in G1, also S phase, right? Like how else do you copy chromosomes? You have to make proteins, you have to make all the machinery. And so all these everyday jobs are happening all throughout interphase. 
Then the dividing phase where we go from one cell into two, that is going to be mitosis. And to remember that, I have the little mnemonic, please make a taco for prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So how are you going to distinguish and remember these different parts or stages of mitosis? Well, practice drawing them, sketch them out, label them, and draw them. So you have to be able to sketch and label a cell in any of these stages of mitosis. And another thing that you need to be able to do is either looking at diagrams, little cartoon diagrams, or photomicrographs, be able to identify, oh, well, that cell is in telophase or that cell is in prophase, by what characteristics is happening in that particular cell. So we don't need to know prometaphase, that's more of an AP bio concept, but we definitely need to know what's going on in prophase. So let's start there. So the first thing is our genetic material is condensing. And so the chromatin is no longer long and skinny. It's forming into our chromosome. Okay, so it's condensing. Now, the centrioles, which are helpers, they are facilitating cell division, are going to move to opposite poles. So here's these little centromeres, and sprouting out from them are these little spindle fibers or mitotic spindles, and they're actually going to hook on to the centromere of each chromosome. So there's a bunch of structures that facilitate, that help out with cell division, spindle fibers, centromeres, centrioles, and while they themselves are not dividing or actually um, chromosomes themselves, they're helping out with the cell division. Okay, so that was prophase. Metaphase I find is the easiest one to tell because you see all the chromosomes are lined up at the equator of the cell, the metaphase plate, also known as the equatorial plate. So the entire chromosome has now hooked on to one of the spindle fibers. The spindle has guided it. It is now lined up in a row along the equator. So that's the easiest stage I feel to tell is metaphase. And then when the cell moves on into anaphase, the chromosomes are going to separate. So they are going to now become two individual chromatids and then they move to opposite poles. So we've got chromosome now becoming chromatid and now chromatids being moving to the opposite poles because of these microtubules, these spindle fibers, these accessory helper proteins that are facilitating, that are helping out with our cell division. Okay, after anaphase, PMAT is telophase next. And in telophase, we see the main distinctive kind of thing happening here is that a cleavage furrow is forming. And so the cells are pinching off into two. The chromosomes are starting to decondense. So here's a chromosome and it is decondensing and it's forming back into chromatin. So again, this cleavage furrow is something that we see in animal cells and it's actin, which you guys know actin and myosin. These are um, microfilaments and they are causing the two cells to tighten and pinch off into two cells. And that's not quite the same as what's going on in a plant. So you have to clue into that there are differences between plants and animals. In a plant, there's not a membrane, there's going to be a cell wall forming. And so for that cell wall to form, cellulose is going to form a cell plate. So a little bit different than what's going on, the pinching off on forming two cell membranes, we're actually making new cell walls. So here's an example of an animal, a white fish, and then here's a plant cell. And so these are actual photomicrographs, and you should be able to look at that and say, oh, well, this one is easy. Here, all these little guys here are the chromosomes. They're lined up in the equator of the cell. And so again, you should be able to look at these particular different stages and different cells and say to yourself, yeah, that is a cell in blah, blah, blah phase. So here's some example of, I'm just blowing this up so it's a little bit bigger and then we can look at and decide what different cells, uh, sorry, what different stages each cell is in, in the different stages of mitosis. 
Okay, so looking here, we're just going to zoom in to some of these cells and kind of play a game like what stage of cell division is that cell in. So we said that most cells are going to be in interphase. So typically in interphase, like I mentioned, you see chromatin and you often see a little dark spot right in the center like this guy has, and that is the nucleolus. So this is a cell in interphase, this cell is in interphase, this cell is in interphase, this cell is in interphase. Most of the cells that you see are going to be in interphase. All right, so now let's find one that is in prophase. In prophase, you would start to see the chromosomes condense and start to become um, actual chromosomes. So perhaps you don't see a nucleus anymore, but you just see a bunch of chromosomes. So maybe this one is starting to form some chromosomes. The centrioles are moving to opposite poles. And then when a cell is in mitosis, you see all the chromosomes lined up in the equator of the cell. So here's the chromosomes lined up in the equator. So this guy is just kind of, uh, kind of, I would say, between prophase and uh, metaphase, trying to get all lined up those chromosomes at the center. Then what happens? Then the chromosomes are going to separate into chromatids, and then the chromatids move to opposite poles. That's anaphase. So here, the chromatids are moving to opposite poles. This guy's metaphase, this guy's metaphase. And then the cells start to pinch off. Now this is an onion, so we're going to see a cell plate forming here. Look at this. There we go. There's a cell plate forming. That cell is in telophase. So we see that the chromosomes are starting to reform. They are going, to, or sorry, to um, go from a chromosome to uh, chromatin getting long and stringy. Okay, so there's some examples for you of cells that are in different stages of mitosis. Remember, interphase is not a stage of mitosis, but it is easy to tell by looking for that nucleolus and looking for that chromatin. Okay, so as you said, or as I said, most cells are going to be in interphase. All right, so that is a little overview of mitosis. You have to memorize the different stages, the major events going in each, and be able to identify cells that are in each different phase. Some terminology that you will need to know, uh, again, be able to sketch and label the different cells in each of the different stages. Uh, study cards are excellent way to do that, to memorize, and a bunch of different vocabulary for you, the chromosome, chromatid, centromere, and a few to add to that. Don't forget that you need to know also the word sex cell or gamete, otherwise known as a sperm and an egg cell, as opposed to to a somatic cell, a body cell, like your hair or nails. And remember that the chromosome content is referred to as haploid or N for those sex cells, the sperm and the egg. And then a somatic cell, body cell is diploid, it is 2N. Okay, well, that should be good enough to get you through mitosis. There's some animations to watch. Until next time, take care.